local and neighborhood dispute. They live in the same recruiting territory. It's Tallahassee versus Gainesville, a relatively young rivalry that has come of age. Florida wanted to win the Southeastern Conference Championship. They didn't make it, but they missed a perfect season up to now by only eight points. Florida State hopes for national honors. They have missed the perfect season by only 10 points. So today, the rewards are simple and apparent. Florida State versus Florida for prestige, recruiting advantage, pride, and bragging rights. Exciting college football on CBS Sports. Florida Field on the campus of the University of Florida in Gainesville, Florida State Seminoles and the Florida Gators. We expect a lot of noise, a lot of color, and a lot of excitement here today. Some 73,000 fans on hand for the renewal of this series, led by Florida 18-6-1. Florida has won the last two games, but the four before that were won by Florida State. The coaches, Charlie Fell of Florida, Bobby Bowden of Florida State, they're all even against each other at 2-2. Two two. Florida State has a reputation of being able to win on the road, but they've lost three so far this year. And here come the Florida State Seminoles. And here come the Gators of the University of Florida. I'm Lindsay Nelson with Pat Hayden. We expected a lot of noise and a lot of excitement, and we're getting it. Pat Hayden, first of all, let's talk about the football game. It's a little unusual situation with the quarterback at Florida State. Well, Bobby Bowden loves to throw the football, and he has said today that they have to throw the football today to win. His quarterback, Bob Davis, number 10. He's a junior. He didn't get a chance to play much this entire year until the eighth game of the season where we replaced the starter, Kelly Lowry. But he's played very well for the Seminoles. He's completed 59% of his passes. But Kelly Lowry, number 12, is available today. His knee injury is recuperated. He's a big, tough, physical type of guy. Bobby Bowden says he will use them if they need some spark. Well, for this particular game, it's also an unusual situation with a running back. Well, Howard Schellenberger, the head football coach at Miami, says that Roosevelt Snipes and Greg Allen are the best tailback tandem in the country. But you're going to see a little different lineup today. Greg Allen and Roosevelt Snipes are going to play in the same backfield. Greg Allen, the All-American, is going to open up at fullback. Snipes, the tailback, he's going to open up there, and they want to get him the ball in the open field as much as they possibly can. University of Florida has a balanced, solid attack, and it's led by a veteran. Wayne Peace, the quarterback. It's a balanced offense, a well-controlled passing game. Wayne Peace has completed 63% of his passes this year. Likes to get, you know, get you in those third and three situations, dump the ball off the back, and pick up a first down. You can't talk about Florida without talking about Wilbur Marshall in defense. Well, he is the All-American. Bobby Bowden says you better know where he is because he is Florida's pass rush. Can chase you down from behind and make a lot of big plays. If the game comes down to one point to decide it, it might be the punting of Florida. Well, field position is going to be critical, and Florida really has the key here. They have two punters. Number 13, Ray Criswell has averaged over 47 yards a punt, had 12 punts over 50 yards. And David Nardoni, number six, he's their short punter. He kicks it out of bounds inside the 10-yard line and makes the opposing team go a long way. And that just about sets it up. Florida State versus Florida. Final regular season game of the season before a sellout crowd in Gainesville, Florida. Present. We're ready for the kickoff by Florida State. Here's Barco with the kick. Hampton is chasing it over and it's going to go out of bounds and across the end line. Henderson did not offer in the corner. It'll be a touchback first and 10 at the 20-yard line. The officials are split through it here today, the SEC and the Southern Independents, with Jimmy Harper as the referee. A split crew of officials. 73 degrees, humidity 65%. Northeast 15 miles per hour. The wind could be something of a factor. Forecast cloudy. The sun is trying to break through the overcast. And in the sunshine state, I'm sure it will. Peace brings him up now. Number 15, Wayne Peace. That's Hampton moving over to a slot left. Williams is the fullback to the slot. Hampton. Lorenzo Hampton. Up there to the 29-yard line, picked up nine. Steve Bloodworth, the walk-on on the right corner. 
Made the tackle. Let's set the backs and receivers for Florida now. At quarterback, number 15, Wayne Peace. He's passed for over 7,000 yards in his career. John L. Williams, the fullback. His average 6.3 per carry. Wayne Dixon, their leading receiver with 40 catches this year. Second down and a yard to go. Wayne Peace, the quarterback. Running backs in an eye formation for Florida. And he has it. He's got the first and 10 for the Florida Gators out at the 36-yard line. So the Gators draw the first first down of the day. Tackle was made by Ponder. Let's look at the offensive line for the Gators now. The man to watch is the center, number 50, Phil Brumley. He's been an all-Southeast Conference selection. First down, 10 yards to go at the 36-yard line. It's Hampton in the tailback. Williams is the fullback. Here's the pitch, Hampton. Hampton slashes down to the 35 to 40-yard line. Pat Milligan from Fort Lauderdale in to make the tackle again of four. That's set the defense now for Florida State. Up front, number 76, Alfonso Carricker. Bobby Bowden said he's the best defensive tackle to play at FSU. And the linebackers, Ken Rowe, weighs only 205 pounds, but he can hit and he can pursue. In the defensive backfield, Eric Riley has four of his team's 10 interceptions. Second down, six yards to go. Florida in possession, again, having just begun. He's on his draw play this time. Taken by Williams, John L. Williams, the sophomore from Palatka. Stopped by John McLean from Claremont, Florida. Bobby Bowden, Bobby Bowden, the head coach of the Seminoles. At one stretch, starting in 1977, he racked up four consecutive victories over Florida in this series. Lindsay, Florida likes to pick at you early in the football game. It's a control game. They mix the run and the pass, but they like to throw the short pass. The first play we saw them throw a short pass to Hampton. They've run Hampton a couple times off tackle, but they like to keep you off balance, but with a controlled offensive scheme. Little B lying, 5-8 is far, far to the right side. He's going to the left side, and it's completed to Dixon. Dixon's across the 50-yard line. He's the favorite receiver. It's going to be marked at the 48. Steve Bloodworth, the walk-on on the right corner, was the defender. First and 10. No, they get it. Nothing fancy here. Wayne Peace to Dwayne Dixon, number 83. Another all Southeastern Conference selection at receiver. That's his 43rd reception of the year. The ball is very well thrown. You can see why Peace has such a high completion percentage. You can't help but catch those kind of passes. Joe Henderson into the ball game at fullback. John L. Williams out for Florida. Henderson is 39. McDonald's in the ball game now. Hampton to a wide right. Lone setback. That's Henderson. Peace now pitches to Henderson. And he's going nowhere. There's no gain on the play. Henderson from Winter Garden, Florida, stopped by Isaac Williams from Sanford. I get second down and 10 yards to go at the 48-yard line. Charlie Pell, head coach at the University of Florida, came here after having had a successful career at Clemson, played his college football at the University of Alabama, and later was on the coaching staff of Paul Bear Bryant. Henderson comes out of the ballgame. John L. Williams comes back in for the Gators. They'll do a lot of shuttling. They get them in there and they get them out. Tom Petty tight end moves to the right side. Peace throwing and completing inside the 30 yard line. It's hindered. It is uh, Mateel. Mateel all the way down to the 10 yard line. First down and goal to go. A 38 yard pickup for the Gators. Peace to Mateel. A very impressive opening drive. You see the, the way that Florida has run the ball effectively here in the first uh, series. Then they fake it to Hampton, get Peace to the outside, and he jumps another short pass over to 89, Ricky Natiel. He breaks a couple tackles and gets way down to the 10-yard line. Another look from the ground level, but again, this is for, for Florida's philosophy. Dump the ball short, make you miss a couple of tackles, come up with a big play. First down and goal to go, tip of the ball, touching the 10-yard line. Dixon in motion across. It's to the tailback. Hampton diving up to the seven-yard line. Second down and goal at the seven. Stop was made by Brian McCrary from Germantown, Tennessee. He's the free safety. Bobby Bowden was very concerned about Florida's ability to be able to control the clock and control the football. If this first series is any indication, Florida State's defense is in for a long afternoon. Actually, they've had a long season defensively. Walter Odom's in there, tight end now. Neil Anderson's in the tailback, number 27 for Florida. Ball is at the seven-yard line. Peace. Peace. 
piled it up inches away from the goal line. He did not get in, but he got very, very close. Wayne Peace, the quarterback carrying McCrary, was the man in under who made the tackle. It'll be third down now. We've seen a lot of different offense here from Florida. Now you're going to see an option play. You see Wayne Peace turn around to give his lead blockers an opportunity to come in and give him some help. You saw 22 John L. Williams give him a little block, but a lot of people out in front of Wayne Peace, and he brings the ball down close to a first down. They're going to bring out the chain and measure for the possible first down now. The ball down there at about the one. But it lacks that much, as you can tell. It started with the tip of the ball outside the 10 yard line. They're going to have now John L. Williams, Neil Anderson, and Lorenzo Hampton. What they like to do, what they have liked to do on other occasions, is to run a power eye and have Williams go up and over down here in this circumstance. They weren't too successful with that against Georgia, were they? They weren't. That was the game plan. They tried it and they had it down on the one yard line and didn't make it. They've had difficulty scoring inside the 20 yard lines. This is a big test for them. First series of the ball game. Third down. Williams in the left set. Anderson in the right set. Peace the quarterback. Well, Peace has got it to Williams. Touchdown. However, there's a penalty marker. His knee was down. And in college football, when the knee goes down and touches the turf, the runner is down, and so Peace is down near the five-yard line. Fourth down coming up. That's exactly right. Wayne Peace, as you're going to see him, he gets bumped right here by his offensive guard, number 68, John Hunt. Got in Peace's way, knocked him down. You see him is on his knee there. And as you mentioned, Lindsay, in college football, that's a dead ball. But this is the kind of mistakes that have plagued Florida's offense inside the 20-yard line all season long. It's going to be Raymond in to attempt the field goal now. He is 14 for 17. His long is 46. And Ray Criswell will hold for him. He's the punter. And this will be a 21-yard attempt. Bobby Raymond attempting. Criswell puts it down, and it's a fake. Criswell now can't go. He was going to try to run it. And so the field goal attempt is no good on the fake field goal. Ken Rowe, the linebacker from Florida State, read it out and made the tackle. Ray Quisman of Florida was, had this in their game plan, obviously. They, want, they felt they could run a fake field goal against the Florida State defense. But right there, there's nowhere to go. Ray Criswell, the holder, number 13, picked it up. Thought there was going to be an opening right here in the bottom of the screen. They thought there was going to be a hole right there. But number 76, Alfonso Carricker, along with some help from his friends, McLean, 86, and some other players, really don't create that. There's the way they thought on the right-hand part of the screen where the hole was going to open up. There's number 38. Ken Rowe is right where they felt the hole was going to be. The kicker really didn't give much help, didn't create a block, but nowhere to go for Ray Criswell, the kicker. There's 9.21 left in the first quarter. That's tonight, a very unusual story of a high school girl who became the quarterback of the team and the homecoming queen. A true and touching story. This, she's 5'4". They said she was too short. I don't understand that. <laughs> That's what they say about quarterbacks. Yeah, that's right. Very nice story, though. First and 10 at the 10 now for Florida State. Allen took the ball. Allen at fullback and Snipes at tailback. Both in the same backfield now running out of the I formation. Here are the backs and receivers. Quarterback Bob Davis. He's played the past two and a half games, thrown six, six touchdowns and only one interception. Greg Allen, who made the Walter Camp All-American already. He has rushed for over 1,000 yards this year. And Weegee Weegee Thompson. Thompson. 6'6", 220, and he can fly. He's had 31 receptions. In the offensive line, their center, number 69, Tom McCormick, a walk-on who started for three seasons. Second down and eight yards to go. Short drop. Well, he tried to get to Weegee Thompson, but Weegee, I'm not sure, knew that. A <laughs> little bit behind him. That's set to fly to get his defense. The defensive line, number 99, Roy Harris, recovering from knee surgery, but he is their emotional leader. He's back. Wilbur Marshall, the All-American, he's made it again, and he'll be on everybody's list, I think. Very mobile, he can pursue. The linebackers, number 59, Mark Korf. Pell says one of the most physical linebackers we've ever had. And Tony Lillis back there at free safety. He calls the defensive signals and sets the deep defense. Here they come now. Bob Davis, the quarterback. Hester and Thompson, the wide receiver. Third down and eight yards to go. Or the Seminoles. They're on 12, try the draw play. That's Roosevelt Snipes. I beg your pardon, it's Allen. That's Greg Allen. Penalty marker, and the ball got away. Florida's got the football. It got away. Florida recovers the fumble. It was Allen, the ball carried. It was recovered at the 26-yard line by Tony Lilly. 
Not a bad call on third and eight. A draw play to one, an All-American back, Greg Allen, number 26. You see him in the fullback position again for the first time. He's following the block of number 63, Ricky Render. He gets in the opening. He actually has the first down picked up, but he is crushed there by 88, Wilbur Marshall. The ball pops loose. 18, Tony Lilly is there. That's good defense. So the Gators get another opportunity at the 26-yard line. The ball is dropped. Campbell is on. Florida retains possession. They recovered their own fumble at the 26-yard line. Neil Anderson on that one. Let's take another look, Lindsay, at the fumble. Here, here's number 26, Greg Allen. He is breaking through. He has the first down picked up. It was third and eight. There's the hit. Number 88, the All-American, Wilbur Marshall. There's no doubt that he is an All-American. You can see the ball come loose. There's 81, very alertly, Randy Clark. And 18, Tony Little, the, Lilly, the free safety, came up with it. Jimmy Harper with a procedure penalty. Dead ball foul. That's a five-yard penalty against the Gators. Moves them back to the 31-yard line. Makes it first down and 15 yards to go. Florida at the Florida State, 31. There is no score in the first quarter. Eight minutes, 23 seconds left in the period. B. Lang, Dwayne Dixon of the wide receivers. That is Anderson. Neil Anderson, the tailback. Down to the 21-yard line. Picked up 10 yards, so it'll be second down and five. John McLean made the tackle. Nothing fancy here. Florida has probably has the advantage up in the offensive line, and they're just going to make you stop them. Number 27, Neil Anderson takes the ball deep in the eye formation, cuts back, reads his blocks well, and picks up some good yardage. Good Langs. block by Phil Bromley, the center. Langs far to the left side. Odom set in the slot. Dixon's far to the right side. Anderson again. Got the first down. It's going to be first down goal to go at the three-yard line. Pat Milligan made the saving tackle. 18 yards on that pickup by Neil Anderson, the leading rusher for the Florida Gators. Take a look at the defensive secondary of Florida State. They look like they're expecting passes, so they're double covering the outside receivers. That leaves a little bit of a gap inside the middle there. Neil Anderson, once he breaks the initial line of scrimmage, he's way into the defensive secondary, picks up a big game before you see any Seminole defenders. They go into the power eye now. Anderson is the deep back. Williams the up back. Hampton off to the left. That's Anderson. Piled up. No signal yet. Did not get in. Anderson got very close, but was stopped by Milligan and by Steve Bloodworth. All the ball ne needs to do is cross the plane of the goal line. Neil Anderson from the tailback position. Let's see what happens. He twists, he turns. You can't really tell from that angle. As a Gator who's getting attention from the training staff now who's injured on the play. That is Anderson, who's carried the ball the last two times. John Hunt from Orlando is the man shaking up. An offensive lineman. Let's take another look at the play, Lindsey. Neil Anderson, again, power football. Florida has the advantage. This Florida State defense has been maligned all season long. Florida's going to come after them with some power football. Just line up their tailbacks deep. Control right. the line of scrimmage and give it to Anderson and Hampton, seven yards deep in the eye formation. Anderson has carried three times. He's picked up 30 yards. Second down goal to go. Hunt is out of the ball game. Jeff Zimmerman has replaced him at left offensive guard. That's for the Florida Gators. Stay in the power eye formation. Williams ahead of Anderson. Hampton to the left side. Try to sneak. Touchdown. Touchdown as Wayne Peace kept the football and took it in for the touchdown. <laughs> Chriswell holding. Raymond is 24 of 26 in points after this season. Chriswell puts it down. Raymond boots it up. And it's good. So the Florida Gators have gone out in front by a score of 7 to nothing. They moved on four plays to 26 yards after recovering the fumble. And it took one minute, 39 seconds. And there's the touchdown. Wayne Peace, number 15, just diving over the right side of his line. Phil Bromley, Buddy Schultz. But this touchdown was the culmination of a very opportunistic offense. You remember that Florida State turned the ball over. They converted it by running power football. Three or four plays with Neil Anderson picking up huge chunks of yardage. Got down the ball. This time they put the ball into the end zone for six.
scored first, has converted the lead 7-0, and now it's going to be Chris Perkins of the Gators who will be kicking it off to Florida State. Florida State is going to have Rosie Snipes center deep, flanked by Billy Allen on one side and Eric Thomas on the other side. Artificial turf here. Snipes moves over to the corner. He's not going to run it out. Touchback, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Snipes took it and knelt in the end zone. So now, Florida State will try to move it. There's number 26, Greg Allen. We mentioned that he started at fullback today for the first time this year. He Remember, he is an All-American. He's rushed for 1,000 yards. Yet, Roosevelt Snipes, Bobby Bowden, this man right here, feels Roosevelt Snipes, number 20, may be just as good. They want to get Snipes in the open field as much as they can. You're going to see them shift Snipes actually into a, into a receiver set out in the slot, try to get him the ball on some short passes, and let him take advantage of that speed and the skill in the open field. Florida State offense, they've been known as the team that has a flashy offense. They have been known as a team that would try reverses, pitchbacks, gadget players, anything. Davis with the ball, throws it out to Snipes from the left flank. However, he is snowed under for a loss on the play. It was Wilbur Marshall who got to it. Number 88, the great defender, along with Bruce Vaughn on that corner. Surprise, surprise, Wilbur Marshall made the tackle, huh? <laughs> Loss of six, makes it second and 16. Wilbur Marshall broke his hand against the USC and missed the Indiana State game this year and has not been as spectacular nor heard from as much in the media as he was last year. Right. We saw a time of possession. Just like last year's game, Florida controlled the clock and never gave Florida State's very explosive offense an opportunity to use their skills. Hassan Jones is in there now. They've got a crew of wide receivers. Got a screen to the right side. That snipes again on the screen. This time to get back to the 18, where it's going to be third and 12. Randy Clark from strong safety made the tackle, along with Tim Newton on the nose. Newton's had a fine year as the nose man for the Florida Gators. Wilbur Marshall, number 88, he's been a factor certainly here in the first half. This time he's going to be taken out of the play. Again, trying to get Roosevelt Snipes into the patterns, into the open field. They throw him a little screen pass, although Wilbur Marshall is not in the play. A lot of his friends are. Jesse Hester's in there now, number four. He's a dangerous receiver, and along with that Snipes moving over to a slot right. They want to get him out there where they can get the ball to him if they can. They try to draw a play. To the other side, that is Allen carrying. Greg Allen could pick his way only to the 22, and that'll bring the punting unit down to the field now. Florida State unable to get the offense on track so far this afternoon. Greg Cleveland made the tackle with Wilbur Marshall. Punter now in to do the punting is Lewis Berry. He's the nephew of John James, former punter for the Atlanta Falcons from Panama City, Florida. He's averaged 41-6, his long this year, 52. A couple of very good punters today. Roger Sibold is deep now for Florida. Tony Lilly is back there as well. Lilly, and he is at the 31-yard line, drops it. Lilly picks it up and returns it to the 35. Former high school quarterback. That was a 47-yard punt that was returned four yards. So Florida gets the ball still with excellent field position when we come back in just a moment. At Florida Field on the campus of the University of Florida in Gainesville, we have four minutes, 39 seconds left to play in the first quarter. The Gators leading 7-0. They have the ball. First and 10 near the 35-yard line. He's handing it off to Neil Anderson, and Anderson got up to the 40-yard line. He picked up five. Fred Jones made the tackle second and five. Florida that is Anderson. Excuse me, Lizzie. Florida State has a different defensive philosophy. While you look at teams like Florida and Nebraska and Texas who have a base defense, and you have to out-execute out them, Florida State's defensive philosophy is to really actually guess, to look at their, your tendencies and try to put more people in those areas than you have. So far, it hasn't worked too well. Bobby Biden says if he guesses right, they have a good day. If he guesses wrong, a lot of points get scored against him. Second and five, Wayne Peace with the football. Dropping back to look. Trying to hit Petty over the middle. And covering with Ken Rowe, the linebacker. Kelly Lowry. There he is, number 12, Kelly Lowry. We talked about him earlier in the game. He was a starter for the first eight games. Hurt his knee. He is healthy. And Bobby Bowden says he will put him in if they team needs a spark, a real competitor. One of the reasons he didn't start him is the fact that he couldn't exercise when he had the knee surgery and he ballooned up to 239 and a half pounds. A 240 pound quarterback is unusual. Bowden hasn't spoken to him since he put on all the weight. 
Third down play coming now, third and five. Peace. There was a screen right to Hampton. Hampton. Got about four yards on the play. Prince Matt from linebacker made the tackle. That brings the punter on, and that's Ray Criswell. Sophomore from Orange Park, Florida. He was a quarterback in high school. Hassan Jones is dropping back deep. Jones is a speedster standing at his own 15-yard line. Hits and bounces across the 20 to the 15. There will be no run back. It'll start at the 18-yard line. Or rather, the 13-yard line. A 48-yard punt by Chris Well. Following our game, it's NCAA basketball. Number one ranked Kentucky hosting Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers. Sam Bowie. Sam Bowie, you bet. And Mel Turpin, the Twin Towers of Kentucky against Indiana. That is a real backdoor rivalry coming up right after this football game. Now we've got Cletus Jones in that fullback and Snipes is in the tailback. First and 10 at the 13 for Florida State. No, he was across the line at the 26-yard line. Taken there by Jesse Hester. Bob Davis hit him, but he could not stay in. You said he hit him. He was well covered. Hester was number four. One foot has to be in bounds. Here's the throw. It is well thrown. Just one foot. It looked like he tapped his right foot there to me in bounds. Right there. It looks like his right foot is tapped and in bounds. It should have been a reception. Second down. Ten yards to go at the 13. Jones and Thompson are the wide receivers now. They'll shuttle him in and out all day. They're just on the ground. To Rosie Snipes. Snipes got just to the 15-yard line before Tim Newton came in to make the stop. Tim Newton, the nose man. Lindsay, we mentioned at the top of the show how big field position was in this football game. For the state, it started with three possessions, once on their 10-yard line, once on their 20-yard line, and once on their 13-yard line. And each time, they've ended up in a third and long situation. And the two previous times, they've run the draw play in this situation. I'll tell you about Tim Newton. He came to school as a 218-pound lineman, went to 290, <laughs> now plays at 275. Down to 275. Down to 275. He's on the nose. As the Utah pass, Rosie Snipe, right, right, Allen, Allen on the Utah pass. There's a fumble. Got away, the scramble is on. And so, it is Greg Cleveland, number 64 on the football for Florida. And again, the Gators get the football. It's been a difficult first half for Greg Allen, that is his second fumble. But Florida has recovered. You, as you mentioned, it was the Utah pass or shovel pass. He is, guess who? It was 88, Wilbur Marshall, who stripped the ball for the second time. The ball comes loose. Watch 26, Greg Allen. Again, pretty big hole on the draw play. But remember, I mean, the pitch play. Wilbur Marshall knocks the ball out. There is 64, Greg Craig Cleveland to make the recovery. Florida has the ball on the 25. First down and 10 yards to go. Wayne Peace, the quarterback. Gives it to his tailback, Neil Anderson. Anderson gets up there to the 22-yard line. Penalty marker on the play. Jimmy Harper, the referee, the man in the white cap. Holding against Florida. Again, penalties have killed Flo this Florida team all season long. Actually, that is their 73rd penalty of the season. Coming in today's game, they've given up over 600 yards in penalties. And the penalties have heard them. Look at these the games they tied. It was against USC. They had six penalties. They lost oh, to yeah. They had 10. Oh, yeah. They lost to Georgia. had two. So they have very much hurt them. Ball moves back there to about the 33-yard line. First uh, down and 18 yards to go. Neil Anderson again, back from running room. Saving tackle made out there by Steve Bloodworth. The corner, the little man out there, five feet eight inches tall, 165 pounder, a walk-on. 
Marked at the 21-yard line. Again, one more time, Neil Anderson power football. The Florida offensive line is dominating the line of scrimmage. And here's a good look at Phil Bromley, the All-Southeastern Conference Center. Gets a little help from John Hunt, the guard. You can see the hole right there for Neil Anderson. Second and six at the 20. 21. Anderson. Pushed out of bounds at the 18-yard line by Steve Bloodworth. We talked about what bad field position Florida State has had on offense. On, on the other side of the ball, Florida has had very good field position. They've had four possessions. Two of them have started in Florida State territory on Florida State's 26 and on Florida State's 25, both after fumbles of Greg Allen's. Third and three at the 18. And a slot left. That's Odom on the slot to the left side. Dixon behind him. Anderson's the tailback. That's Odom in motion all the way across. That's Anderson. Didn't get the first down. Was upset and undercut by Ken Rowe, the linebacker from Cropwell, Alabama. That brings up a fourth down. Florida is leading by a score of 7-0, and now they're bringing Bobby Raymond on to attempt a field goal. Good defense here. Number 38, Ken Rowe, the linebacker. You see there, there in the right-hand part of your screen, he jumps, hurdles right over John L. Williams and makes a stop and forces a field goal attempt. That's excellent defense by Rowe. From the hash mark left, a 34-yard attempt now. Chriswell was holding. Bobby Raymond is kicking. And it's good. Three more points for the Florida Gators, who in the brilliant sunshine of his first through here now lead by a score of 10 to nothing. It's a gathering of some 73,000 fans here at Florida Field today for this annual battle between Florida State and Florida. It is, of course, a non-conference game. Each of these teams already has accepted a bowl bid. So this is just a backyard battle here this afternoon. Tomorrow, the NFL Today kicks off great regional action. Dallas Cowboys take on the dangerous Seattle Seahawks. Atlanta Falcons face John Riggins and the Redskins. Plus these other games you see, it all starts with the NFL Today. Check your local listings for your game tomorrow on CBS Sports. The NFL Today, or the NFL, won a Emmy Award this week. We are all very, very proud of them for bringing us football on Sundays. Our congratulations to all of them. Chris Perkins is going to kick it off now. Hash mark left. Rosie Snipes is in the center deep. Billy Allen's on one side and Eric Thomas on the other. Knuckleball. Snipes takes the knuckle on the four-yard line to the 5, 10, 15. Snipes trying to get to the sideline and up the sideline. Returned it at that to the 35-yard line where it'll be first down and 10 yards to go for Florida State. Curtis Stacy made the tackle for the Gators. 31-yard return. Roosevelt Snipes came up with a big player there. This is the best field position the Florida State's offense has had all afternoon. Now, the offense has to do something. The defense has been on the field much too long here in the first half, the first quarter, and Florida is really taking it to them on defense. So the offense has to do their part, get a couple of first downs, come up with a big play. It is Kelly Lowry at quarterback. They brought Lowry in at quarterback. 239-pounder has the football. Lowry pops it out there complete. Taken by Tom Wheeler is tight end. Bobby Bowden felt, I'm sure, that the time had come, having given up 10 points. He had to get Lowry on the field. He, he felt that he could give them a spark. He is a senior. He is a leader. He is an incredible competitor. Bobby Bed Bowden said about Lowry, he is the best all-around talented quarterback we've had at Florida State. Perhaps this is the lift that they need offensively. First and 10 now. For the Seminoles at their own 46-yard line. Snipes and Cletus Jones are in that backfield. Snipes the tailback. Jones the fullback. Snipes with the ball. He's pulled out. Could not go, and it was Mark Korf, the linebacker. Gain of about two yards. Time has run out on the clock on the field, uh, showing no time remaining. However, we have had no signal from the field itself. Clock says 15 minutes remain to be played. That means it's another quarter, folks. <laughs> And so Jimmy Harper takes the football and marks it over to the other side of the 50 yard line. That was the end of the quarter. Florida 10, Florida State nothing.
Bobby Bowden told us last night that he would not hesitate to bring Lowry into the ball game, that he would start him except for the fact that he was overweight and he thought he might run out of gas, but if he got behind, he wouldn't hesitate to bring him in. He's in as we start the second quarter, and that's Kelly Lowry with the football. Incomplete. It was Fred McAllister, the linebacker, number 46. Intended for Roosevelt Snipes. Let's check out that time of possession in the first quarter. We said last year's game, that was the key statistic. It has been so far this game, too. Florida, 10, 10 and a half minutes. Florida State, four and a half minutes. The Florida State offense is going to have to control the ball, but that has also been the story. Two turnovers by Greg Allen has given Florida excellent field position, allowed them to put 10 points on the board. For Florida State, Tom McCormick is out at center. Sam Restivo is in. Third down, eight yards to go at the 48-yard line for the Seminoles. Kelly Lowry. All the time in the world. Complete. Breaking down there inside the 35 yard line. Hassan Jones stopped by Fred McAllister. Jones knocked out at about the 31 yard line. Bobby Bowden said the key to his offense is giving his quarterback time to throw. He's had plenty of time to throw, and you're going to watch number 88, Hassan Jones, run across the middle. The quarterback still is un not under pressure. There's the throw and the catch for first down, but we're going to bring it back because there was a penalty on the play. It's a procedure penalty against the Florida State Gators, so it will cost them a 17-yard pickup on the pass, bring it back to the line of scrimmage, and Jimmy Harper, the referee of the Southeastern Conference, marks off the five-yard penalty. Five Illegal procedure on the offense, six men on the line of scrimmage. You got it. Formation violation. Can you, can you tell we're in the south? Yes, he is. As a matter of fact, I've had Jimmy Harper in three consecutive games. <laughs> I had him at Foxborough, Massachusetts for Boston College, Alabama, and at Kentucky for Kentucky, Tennessee. Three in a row. Kelly Lowry. And it's caught. Taken by Hester. Jesse Hester at the 32-yard line. That'll be enough for a first and ten. Mark Korf, linebacker, made the tackle. Kelly Lowry has done exactly what Bo Bobby Bowden had hoped, and that's provide a, provide a spark. Again, excellent, superb protection for Lowy as it delivers another strike to Jesse Hester, number four. Enough for the first down. It was third and about 15. Hester ran the right route to get, pick up the first down. He did that. They got 24 yards on the play. Now Tony Johnson comes in as a wide receiver, and Ouija Thompson goes off. Johnson to the left side, Jesse Harper to the right. Jesse Hester to the left, right side. Hester's got it. Touchdown. Jesse Hester for the touchdown. Oh, I love it. Vito McKeever covering on the Three-yard pass play, and now a conversion attempt by Philip Hall, who is no good. No good as he stubbed that one. That's the sixth extra point they have missed this season. A look at Kelly Lowry. He does it more by force of will than talent. But this ball is beautifully thrown to number four, Jesse Hester. You saw Lowry look off the defense. He actually looked off the free safety, Tony Lilly. Number 18, but absolutely a superb throw and remarkable concentration by Hester. Bobby Powden calls him our most dangerous receiver, and you see why. Watch this catch. Superb. And so the score is now Florida 10, Florida State 6. Lowry, since coming to the game, is 3 for 4, 68 yards and one touchdown. Jesse Hester, who just made his sixth touchdown reception of this season. And it was a Lulu down deep in the end zone. Now it's going to be Florida State kicking off. And it'll be Barry Barco. There is the scoring drive. Five plays, 65 yards a minute 40. 33-yard pass from Lowry to Hester. Lorenzo Hampton is center deep to receive it. However, it's going into the end zone and it will not be run out to the touchback. It'll be first and ten at the 20-yard line. Joe Henderson took it. There is Kelly Lowry. He throws pretty good for a guy 240 pounds, doesn't he? 
He certainly does. His quarterback coach is Mike Krusik, <laughs> formerly of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he's going to come back to an active career in the USFL at Jacksonville, and uh, apparently Kelly Lowry is going to compete with him for the job. I wonder if he's really teaching him how to read coverages, do you think? <laughs> First down, 10 yards to go now for the Gators. They have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Hampton and Henderson in the backfield. A little groundskeeping taking place for the moment. Holding up play. We're ready to go now. Wayne Peace playing his last game on Florida field for the Gators. He's had an outstanding career at quarterback. Start dropping guns. Gathered in up there at the 29-yard line by Dwayne Dixon. It's a favorite passing combination of the Gators. Steve Bloodworth covering on the corner. Football is a game of, of momentum. We saw Florida early in the football game have that momentum and give them 10 points. We saw a change at quarterback to gain some momentum for Florida State. Kelly Lowry gave that to him, came back and throw a touchdown. Now it's back up to Wayne Peace to try to get the momentum back in his favor. Keep he, Lowry off the field. He is 5 for 6, 66 yards. They run the pitch this time to Henderson. Got the first down. Joe Henderson carried. And Brian Williams came in to make the tackle. Let's take another look at the center. Phil Bromley, the all-southeastern conference center. Watch the kind of work that he has. He's snapping left-handed because he broke his right hand early in the year. You see him doing a little crab block there on the linebacker on Fred Jones, number 55. That's good work by Bromley. Last year, the Florida Gators won by keeping the football and keeping it away from Florida State in the first quarter. Florida State had the ball four minutes, 33 seconds. Florida had it 10 minutes, 27 seconds. That's the way you play possession football. If you get a couple of breaks, you got something on the scoreboard. That is the pitch to Hampton from Peace on one hop. Where do you go with it? Well, to the line of scrimmage, more than likely. Not quite that. Loss of about three yards on the play. Bloodworth again on the tackle with Brian Williams. Going to be spotted at the 29-yard line. Loss of eight yards on the play. They're all out here for this one. <laughs> what, what, uh, sh what shirt did he uh, crawl <laughs> off of? <laughs> A lot of those in this area, believe me. Oh, yes. Ray McDonald has come out of the field now as a wide receiver for Florida. Second and long. Wayne Peace. And it's completed to the 33-yard line. Taken there by Dixon. Dwayne Dixon, number 83. Tracy, Tracy Ashley made the tackle. Again, the short passing of Florida. Remember, it was second and very long there. They wanted to get it back in two chunks. A short pass there to Dwayne Dixon, number 83. But they're still faced with third and 11. Third and 11 at the 36. Time remaining in the half. 12.42 and running. Florida leading by a score of 10 to 6. Wayne Peace. Completed it across the 50 yard line. Taken by Dwayne Dixon. John McLean made the tackle. Peace was reached just as he unloaded the football. You're absolutely right. Wayne Peace was under some duress. Watch. Number 83, Dwayne Dixon. He averages five receptions a game. He's certainly been a factor here in the first half. The ball is right in the numbers there. He catches the ball, knows where the first down marker is, and picks it up, keeps the chains moving. 16-yard pickup on the play. Wayne Peace last year set an NCAA record for completions in the season, 71.3. It was broken by Steve Young of BYU this season. Henderson gets it all the way down to the 37-yard line. Very close to a first down. They'll take a good look at this one. Might have picked it up as we look at it from here. They'll take it to the inbound mark and spot it. First and ten for the Gators on the big gainer. At the 37-yard line of the Florida State Seminoles. First down, Florida. The best part of the Florida State team is their offense. Their defense is going to have to do something to get the ball back and let Kelly Lowry do his thing. They may have to blitz or slant or come up with a big turnover to give Lowry a chance. John far to the right side. That's Williams. Donnell Williams inside the 
30 to the 29 yard line. Picked up about eight on the play. It'll be second down and two. Brian McCrary made the tackle. Here's the play selection. We've seen Florida run the ball 20 times and very effectively. Effectively, it passed eight times. Most of them are the short variety, really a controlled passing game, almost like a run. A dominated the line of scrimmage, controlled the clock. Ricky Nathiel's part of the left side, McDonald on the right side. They move Hampton into the slot left. Donnell Williams alone set back for peace. And Williams has got the ball. He's inside the 20-yard line. He goes all the way down to the 16-yard line. McCrary finally brought him down at the 16. Florida is controlling the nose guard. See how deep the safeties are. They really aren't there to come up and support. And here's John L. Williams, just a quick little hitter over the middle. Once you get past the nose guard, you're right in the secondary, but by the time you get there, you've already picked up 10 or 12 yards. This is the sort of thing that Coach Bobby Bowden of Florida State was concerned about. He's saying you can't run an offense and score if you can't get the ball. All control offense by Florida Dedu. loose from him and they stack him up down there about the 15 yard line Florida retains possession at the 15 well, that's what Florida State has to hope for actually a turnover and coming coming up with the ball there Florida retain possession second and nine at the 15 actually it's Gandy yard on the fumble Scott Trumbull was the man who was on the ball Lake Brantley Florida 6'5 291 pound offensive tackle and here's a timeout signal Timeout charge to Florida. First of three charge to the Florida Gators. So the Gators are out front of the ball game. They're leading by a score of 10 to 6. They're threatening again. They're down at the 15. We have 10 minutes, 2 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. At Florida Field in Gainesville, Florida, some 73,000 fans packed and jammed in here. We have 10 minutes, 2 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. The Gators are leading the Seminoles by a score of 10 to 6. Florida has the ball at the 15-yard line, second and nine. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Pat Hayden. Wayne Peace, the quarterback, number 15. Receivers double to the right side, movement. The offensive line, then of the defensive line, and then contact. We've mentioned penalties and how they have hurt this Florida football team all season long. And again, that is their 73rd penalty of the season. Cost them five. Their third of the Dead day ball. for 20 yards. Illegal procedure. Hold on. Off that. I think it was Lomas Brown who moved. Ball moves back to the 20-yard line. Second and 14 at the 20. Starts to Neil Anderson, the tailback. He's stopped by Ken Rowe, the linebacker on the left side. Down there at the 17-yard line. Be third down and 11. Spotted now on the 12. Beg your pardon, 17. There goes the little man, B. Lang, part of the right side. Move Tom Petty, the tight end over right. Dixon in motion across. Wayne Peace. Incomplete to Dixon in the end zone. Bloodworth covering. Little man Bloodworth, the walk-on in the right corner that we talked about in the NCAA today. It's the man who was there, number nine. Wayne Peace had number 83, Dwayne Dixon, open early, but he was under pressure from Alfonso Carriker, so he couldn't get the ball to him. You can see 83 Dixon there beating Bloodworth. He's open, but again, Peace is under duress. He throws the ball late, and Bloodworth makes a nice play. The walk-on, Steve Bloodworth. Fourth down coming up here. A 33-yard attempt for Bobby Raymond. Chris Well is holding for it. 33-yarder is good. But Florida adds three more from the kicker. Nine minutes, 13 seconds remaining to be played in the first half of the ball game. The Gators are now leading by a score of 13 to 6.
again. Indiana and Kentucky coming up next now. Live from Rupp Arena, one of the big, big college basketball games. Talking about a few national championships between those two schools. These are the starting lineups, the ball players that we expect to see in the Indiana versus Kentucky coming up immediately following this football telecast. It's going to be Chris Perkins kicking off. Snipes in the end zone. Will not run it out. Touchback first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Time of possession, as you mentioned earlier, Lindsay, you cannot score without the football, and Florida State has not had it enough. Florida's had it for 10 more minutes here in the first half. There's still nine minutes left to go in the first half. Kelly Lowry, number 12, the quarterback. He can throw it a mile. Strong arm. Lowry short drop. Gets it out there to Hester. Jesse Hester out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Picked up six, it'll be second and four. Ricky Eastman on the corner, ran him out. There's Eastman on that corner from Dunellen, Florida. We've seen two different styles of passing here. Florida State really does like to get the ball downfield to their wide receivers. We saw, we saw the big touchdown catch by Hester a little earlier. Florida, on the other hand, again, as we've seen, likes to dump the ball off to the backs and throw short routes to Dixon. They both get the job done, but different approaches. Hester's caught three for 63 yards, so far he's coming out to a wide left this time. Allen and Snipes are the running backs in there together. That's Allen, Greg Allen with the football. On to Little Daylight. He's rushed for over 1,000 this year, got to the 35 there. Ricky Eastman in to make the stop. First and 10 again of about nine on the play. There he is, he made the Walter Camp All-American football team as well as Wilbur Marshall, number 88 for Florida. Last year he led the nation in scoring. This year he scored 12 touchdowns, Greg Allen. McCormick's back in there at center. Cletus Jones is the fullback. Knives is the tailback. Lowry, mobilizing at the line of scrimmage. He's got the ball. Hester. Incomplete. The move was made by Bruce Vaughn from Largo, Florida, the cornerback over there. 47. This is a superb defensive play by 47, Bruce Vaughn. He has him one-on-one -on -one out here because it's a safety blitz. He reads the out cut and dives right in front of Hester. Almost nearly intercepts the ball, but certainly prevents Hester from making the catch. Lowry is four for six, 74 yards and one touchdown since coming in. There's Vaughn. They say he reads receivers and cuts as well as anyone we've ever had here who's played defensive back. Eight minutes, 32 seconds left in the first half. Lowry. Incomplete. It was Tony Johnson trying to hang out on his fingertips, but he could not. It's incomplete. Vernell Brown was covering. Take a look at the defensive secondary of Florida and how they're trying to defense Kelly Lowry. You see the two safeties deep in the middle of the screen right there. They want to take away the deep play that Hester caught a little bit earlier. So what do you have to do? You have to go underneath those safeties. That's exactly what's happening here. But the linebackers do a very good job of dropping and actually force the ball to be thrown high so that Tony Johnson, number 82, can't catch the ball. That's good play by the, by the linebackers of Florida. Third and 10 for the Seminole. Some players are in the right place at the right time. That makes them very good. Another sense of the game. Kelly Lowry is back. He's under incredible pressure there by number eight, Ricky Eastman, a corner blitz. And Lowry threw the ball without ever seeing Marshall. He was under duress, but Mar Marshall was right there to make the interception. Another turnover, and the Gators have the football. Wayne Pease dropping and running up the middle. Pease to the 30-yard line. 
Picked up five yards on the play, second and five at the 30. Steve Bloodworth made the tackle, and there is Wilbur Martin. Bloodworth and Williams. Dominating player on defense for Florida. That's exactly what Florida State's defense has lacked this year, the dominating player that can raise the level of his teammates, to raise the level of play of his teammates. Marshall certainly does that for the Gators. Florida came into this game with a record of 7-2-1. and one. Florida State came in 6-4. and four. David on the ground. Taken by Joe Henderson. Winter Garden, Florida. Got it down there to the 26-yard line before Brian Williams brought him down again of four. It'll be third down and a yard to go. Time remaining is 7-22 and, and running. That's remaining in the first half. It was overcast most of the morning here in Gainesville, but just about kickoff time, the sun broke through the overcast. So we're getting a timeout signal here. It is charged to Florida State. So the Gators are leading Florida State by a score of 13 to 6 with 7 on remaining in the first half. The Florida Gators have the ball now. Third down and a yard to go at the 26-yard line of Florida State. Wayne Peace, the quarterback. Neil Anderson, John L. Williams are the setbacks. They're in a power eye formation. Give it to Anderson. He's got the first and ten. Up and over for the first down. McCrary made the tackle. About it just inside the 24-yard line. Charlie Pell, head coach of the Florida Gators, came here after having been head coach at Clemson. One time was on the staff at Virginia Tech. Played at Alabama, coach for Bear Bryant there, was on the staff at Kentucky. Veteran football man, Charlie Pell. Lang and Dixon are the wide receivers. the tackle they sort of use the umpires to screen there kid rose is making a lot of tacklers tackles today there he is he says he's the most efficient linebacker they have their leading tackler from cropwell alabama second down and 10 yards to go wayne peace in 1981 had 117 consecutive completions without an interception his lifetime completion percentage, 61.4. He is accurate. Green piece. Complete. Neil Anderson. Neil Anderson to the five. First and goal at the five for the Gators. Peace to Anderson. Scott made the tackle. Wayne yards. To Neil Anderson, you don't think these two, this is a hot interstate rivalry? Watch the effort of Neil Anderson after he catches this football. He's bouncing off a couple of tackles, jumping over guys, finally does get tackled down there in the five yard line. A very good throw by Wayne Peace, again, under a little bit of duress from Alfonso Carricker. The ball is well thrown right in the numbers to Anderson. Wayne Peace has just broken John Reeves, Southeastern Conference and school record of 603 career completions. That record just set there by Wayne Peace with that completion. Timeout on the field. When players resumed, it'll be at the five-yard line. First and goal for the Gators. Florida leading Florida State by a score of 13 to 6. Well, there's the record we told you about that Wayne Peace just set, and he also has set another Southeastern Conference total offense. Wayne Peace has just moved past former Heisman winner Pat Sullivan into third place with 6,853 yards. First and goal for the Gators at the five-yard line of Florida State. Five minutes, 46 seconds left in the half. Wayne Peace with the ball, throws into the end zone, and incomplete. <laughs> it was Tom Petty, the tight end, trying to scoop it up. Second and goal at the five-yard line. You're not going to see Wayne Peace miss too many of these kind of throws. But you hear, they fake it to Neil Anderson. That play has been so effective all day, the defense has to respect it. And you're going to see the result. Tom Petty, number 85, is wide open. But Peace tried to aim the ball. Sometimes quarterbacks do that. When they have a rece receiver wide open, instead of drilling the ball in there, they'll try to aim it. And that's exactly what happened there. Florida has 108 yards passing and 107 yards 
crushing so far in this ball game. That is what you call balance. <laughs> he's got the ball. He's got a touchdown. Conversion attempt coming now. It is Bobby Raymond into attempted. Criswell is holding for him. Raymond's conversion is good. The gate is 20 and Florida State 6. 5.35 remaining to be played in the first half. There was a little confusion here as you watch Wayne Peace. You can see a little early in the game, you remember he ran into the offensive lineman. There's some more confusion there. But Wayne Peace shows his athleticism. He said what a great thrower he is, how accurate it is. Here he uses his feet, as he did in this drive a couple of different times, scrambling for yardage. Here he gets into the end zone. Again, it's going to be an option play. You can see the right guard, Buddy Schulteis, number 73, leading down front. Wayne Peace finds a little gap there and turns on the juice, knows where the end zone is. But this touchdown was really the result of another turnover, Florida State's third turnover. Remember Walter, remember Wilbur Marshall intercepted that pass, gave Florida excellent field position for the third time today. Florida being an opportunistic offense, put it in the end zone one more time. And now we have the kickoff coming from the hash mark left, and it's going to be Chris Perkins kicking it off. That's Charlie Fell pacing the sidelines, head coach of the Gators. Well, you couldn't Dundee. tell he's, he's leading 26, could you? Rosie Snipes. He won't get it. It's going to go into the end zone, and it's going to be run out. Eric Thomas is going to try to run it out and throw it back across the field. Taken over there by Hester. Jesse Hester now up the sideline. This is Florida State and Bobby Bowden. 45 all the way down to the Florida 39. Here's the throw, Bobby Bell, you never know quite what to expect. Here is the throw back over to number four, Jeff Jesse Hester. He felt if his defense couldn't keep forward from the end zone, he was going to have to create some big plays. One way to do it is on special teams, and here is a big play. A surprise for a big gain way down into Florida territory at the 39. Bobby Bowden, there is no penalty marker. 61-yard pickup, first and 10 at the 39-yard line of Florida. Lowry with the football. Swings it out to Allen. Greg Allen with the ball. Looking for some running room. Penalty marker is thrown. Two penalty markers are thrown. So we'll have to check out the penalty markers now. Penalty is against Florida State. It'll be marked off in the 40-yard line. A 15-yard penalty will put the Seminoles back at their own 45. Clipping. Clipping on offense during the play. That takes a lot of air out of the big play on the special teams by Hester. It's first and forever now. It's all of that. Jamie Dukes, number 64, he's right there. His helmet has to be in front of the defender there. You can see he clipped number nine, 93, Alonzo Johnson. Good call by the official. First and 26 yards to go. Kelly Lauer waiting to get the snap. By the draw play. It's Allen. Greg Allen. Got about three yards and was hit by Fred McAllister. The linebacker from Melbourne, Florida. That's up the 48-yard line. It'll be second down now. And 23 yards to go. Four minutes, 40 seconds left to play on the first half. Florida's leading by a score of 20 to 6. Allen has carried six times for 42 yards. Coming into the game today, he had rushed for 1,047 yards this year. Six feet tall, 200 pounder. Nice in the right set. Lowry. Going deep. Intercepted at the 25 yard line. Taken by Ricky Eastman. Eastman with the interception. Yeah. 
The fourth turnover by the Florida State offense. Number 88, Asan Jones. It's actually double coverage here. You're going to see Ricky Eastman, number eight, come underneath the ball. He read Lowry all the way, made a very nice interception. Here, one more look. Ricky Eastman, the junior, is 5'10", 155 pounds, leaps up in front of Jones, makes a very nice play. Another big play by the Florida defense. First and 10 for Florida. They have the ball now at their own 23-yard line. By the tailback, Hampton. Lorenzo Hampton out to the 27. Stopped by Isaac Williams. Gain of four, makes it second down and six yards to go. Look at those turnovers, fumble, fumble, and interception, touchdown, field goal, and touchdown. That's what you call capitalizing on your opportunities, and that is the name of the game. Ford is just too good an offensive football team to be able to turn the ball over four times and not get hurt. Into the tailback, and this time he's stacked up. Hampton pushed back at the 26-yard line by Ponder and by Stanley Scott. It'll be third down and seven. Bach is running. 315 remaining to be played in the half. Florida leading Florida State 20 to 6. Lang is going far to the right side. Dixon far to the left side. Over the middle, Dixon at the 40, and Dixon gets it all the way up to the 44-yard line. Trent Smith made the tackle. Here's a look at Bobby Bowden. Some people might think he just want to get into the halftime regroup. He's down 20 to 6. That is not Bobby Bowden's style. Believe me, if he gets the ball back, he's going to push the ball upfield and try to get it in the end zone. When you're down 20 to 6, you need to do some things like that. First down and 10 yards to go with the ball just outside the 44-yard line. Wayne Peace with a quick pitch to the outside of Neil Anderson. Anderson across the 50. Across the 45 and out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Ryan McCrary ran him out. It'll be marked at the 44. Florida has the capability of running the ball inside, get the tough yards. We've seen them do that with Neil Anderson. They also have the capability of running the ball outside with some speed. Again, here's the little quick toss. To Anderson, he gets outside and picks up a first down. Anderson's carried 10 times for 66 yards so far this afternoon. First and 10, Florida at the Florida State 44. It's Henderson carrying. Penning his way all the way down inside the 34-yard line. Alfonso Carica, great defensive tackle, made the stop. Carica's from Columbus, Ohio. Got away from Ohio State. He says Ohio State didn't really pay an awful lot of attention to him. I think they may live to regret that. They did. He's been back <laughs> twice and uh, participated in defeating him. They're measuring for the possible first down. It is a first and ten. Near the conclusion of today's CBS Sports NCAA football telecast, Pat and I will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each of the teams. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. The MVP has received certificates from Chevrolet acknowledging their outstanding performances. First and 10 at the 34. Henderson, the up back, 39, got through there inside the 25 to the 23. Another first down, Pat Milligan made the stop. First and 10 at the 23. Florida State's defense has been very soft right up the gut. You can see another huge gaping hole. Bromley, the center, does a nice job, clears the way for Henderson, but there's nobody there until the defensive backs. They're going to have to shift their offensive defensive front to get some more help in the middle. The domination see. of the offensive line. First down play coming, Wayne Pete, the quarterback. Gives it to Henderson again. They keep running it. And so Florida State stops it. They're going to keep running it. It's inside the five-yard line. McLean made the tackle. First and goal at the five-yard line. An 18-yard pickup by Joe Henderson. 
from Winter Garden, Florida. Lindsay, you are absolutely right. You keep running something until they stop it. So they come right back to Joe Henderson, the exact same play. Right past the nose guard, right past the linebackers. A couple of big blocks there into the defensive secondary. Another big gain by Joe Henderson. John L. Williams is in there now with Neil Anderson. They're on a power eye formation. Wayne Peace, the quarterback. Give it to Williams. Got not much, maybe a foot. It was Isaac Williams who came underneath to make the stop. He's in Sanford, Florida. We have less than a minute remaining in the half, and the clock is running, and Florida wants a timeout. Peace running up there saying, give us a timeout, and they got it, and I think that's their last one. And now, as we have a timeout on the field, let's visit the campuses of both of these fine Florida schools. I'm Robert Marston. A new and better world for all will grow from new opportunities in information transfer. Whether my own personal computer, improved student learning, or the protection of Florida's citrus industry, the University of Florida will be a part of and benefit from advances in the computer and information sciences. Because we know this will require new forms of cooperation, the University of Florida is developing this land for a research and technology park for industry. 54 seconds left to play in the half. Florida leading by a score of 20 to 6. The ball is at the five-yard line. It'll be second down and goal at the five for the Florida Gators, and here they come. Wayne Peace is over on the sideline talking to the spotters upstairs on the headset so he knows what they want to try to do here from the five-yard line. They're in a power eye formation. Williams, John L. Williams, down inside the three-yard line where it'll be third down and goal. Brad Foytek made the tackle. He's from Auburndale, Florida. Third and goal at the three-yard line. He's rolling and looking. Wants to throw back. Can't do that. He made the tackler. Throws it away. Across the end line. It'll be fourth down coming up. Neil Anderson was down there in that general geographical area, but there seems to be a flag on the play, and it's being checked out just now. Here's There's a look no at Wayne Peace. The flag was dropped inadvertently. There, we no have the official saying the though. flag was dropped inadvertently. So this is a very smart play by Wayne Peace. He gets rid of the ball without taking a sack. But it's a big defensive play also by Florida State, which forces Florida into a fourth and goal situation and forces a field goal attempt. Flag was thrown inadvertently, and so now the field goal unit has come on. And this will be a 21-yard attempt for Bobby Raymond. Ray Criswell holding for him. 21 yard here is good. Three more points for the Florida Gators to make it 23 to 6. 18 seconds on the clock remaining to be played in the first half. One of the big games coming up, of course, in the postseason array is the Cotton Bowl game in Dallas, Texas on January 2nd. We've got Florida against Georgia, a fine football game. Well, excellent defense. We've seen Texas a couple of times this year, the number one ranked defense in the country. They've been superb. Georgia supports a very good defense as well. They've picked up after Herschel Walker doing quite well, thank you. Terry Holt, the All-American, their strong safety. It's going to be a good game. And, of course, also on CBS Sports, you'll see the Sun Bowl. That's Alabama against SMU on Saturday, December 24th. SMU is probably one of the finest teams in the country that nobody's heard about. They haven't got the respect. Bobby Collins is disappointed that he hasn't gotten the respect throughout the country. They are a very good football team. And also on CBS Sports, you'll see the Peach Bowl, and we'll tell you a little more about that later. Chris Perkins is ready to kick it off. Florida State and North Carolina in the Peach Bowl. It's a touchback. Eric Thomas sort of made a move there. Let's uh, look again uh, and talk about the Peach Bowl coming up in Atlanta. Florida State and North Carolina, that is on Friday, December 30th. Well, Florida State's going to have to find some defense before they get there because North Carolina is a very good offensive football team. Scott Stankavage has had a very good year at quarterback. Dr. Archie Roberts report to the information booth at Dr. Archie Roberts for the information booth at Kelly Lowry, the quarterback, brings it up now first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Stay tuned uh, during the halftime intermission. We'll bring you all sorts of information with Brenton Era from New York. 
That is Greg Allen carrying the football, and he got out there for about three. Wilbur Marshall upset him. First half really has been a half of turnover, turnovers. Florida State has turned the ball over four times. But really, that's been the result of their defense really not keeping Florida off the field. They're playing catch-up, and that's why they turned the ball over so much. Time has run out. It's the end of the first half. Our score is 23 to 6. We'll be back with Brent Nair from New York plus a live report from Lexington, Kentucky. It's all coming up after this word about an upcoming show on CBS and a message coming from your local station.